Hi everybody, welcome back to Woman Carrying Man. I'm Jake, this is Nadia, this is Buddy, this is Sedona, and today we are talking about Turning Red, Disney Pixar film that came out not too long ago, this year I think, right? Just for clarification, we're not Turning Red. The title of the movie is Turning Red. Okay, that I guess that wasn't funny, whatever. <laughs> we went into this with no expectations, really. I mean, I, honestly, I didn't hear much about this movie when it came out, and I, you, I don't think you'd even heard of it. And I was like, it's a Pixar movie, and we watched it. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, I will say I'll rate this a seven. Yes, put it on the comment that I always rate things seven. I'm sorry that I watch <laughs> things that are seven, my God. I would think that the first five to 10 minutes of the film, I was like, oh, I don't know if this is like, this is supposed to be a kid's film. I don't know if I, I'm supposed it to watch it. It had a lot of it. energy and felt very, almost TikTok in its, in its um, pace. It was a little too frenetic. Yeah, and then I was like, well, I don't know if this is like for our demographic. But then it turned like, I felt like it was really great, hilarious. It was uh, relatable, um, profound. It, it really was great. Um, I mean, I know that like it's been a theme in a lot of Pixar movies, a lot of kids movies in general, just about and even everything everywhere all at once, but just like the mm -hmm. uh, dealing with, uh, you know, intergenerational issues, you know, dealing with your parents and uh, how they deal with their parents. I think especially as Living an up to your parents. Right, right, right. And for me, I'm Asian and um, I could relate a lot of things culturally to how my parents were raised and how I, in turn, was raised and the expectation, I think, um, that is kind of put on you in a lot of ways yeah what did you rate it by the way um i'd give it like an eight out of ten wait did i rate lower than you yeah whoa i know all right so the <laughs> reason why i give it an eight out of ten is because it it felt like it had a message but it conveyed it in a way that wasn't um like it would it fit well within the story it was all dramatically told it there it wasn't all speeches about things it, it felt very natural to the story it didn't it wasn't extremely long. It, it had, you know, a, a nice art style. You know, it was very nice to look at and had some f genuinely funny moments. And I thought that the what it was trying to talk about, you know, parents living up to your parents and the roles. And though I am neither Asian nor am I female, I found it very relatable mm -hmm. <laughs> just in terms of trying to be, you know, like when I was a kid, I was I wanted to be the perfect goody two shoes and was oh, I hear. <laughs> terrified of letting anyone down. And, you know, so it, I found that very relatable, you know, the idea of, you know, th this part of your life trying to take the first steps towards being your own person and being a rebel. And, and it's a very like rocky terrain, you know, and you can kind of see it in the movie of how parenting, parenting at that age must be very scary because like you make a mistake or you're too hard this way or too lean. It's, it's like, that's the foundation of your relationship with this person, with this soon to be adult for the rest of your life, you know? It's really interesting how we got to see with um, May's character to her, her mother and then her mother's relationship to May's grandmother was really showed like what mistakes could have been made. And of course, all the women in her family end up, you know, involved in this. And it just felt very honest. It felt like it was being written from a human perspective, a person, like a person was behind this movie and had something to say rather than uh, a committee, you know. It wasn't just like light year, like of watching hitting plots or like very like scientific formula of a screenplay. It actually felt like it was endorsing a message in a way that didn't just tell but also show. And it felt like it was based on someone's real experience and, and memories and, um, it, it introduced the fantasy elements of the the panda, but in a way that wasn't too heavy-handed. I think you know. I, I thought that the the parallels and the metaphors were kind of charming, and uh, I mean, the, even the fact it was based in Toronto in the early two thousands, like it, it felt like a very unique type of story that was being told. Really liked the film as well. I think you <laughs> iterated a lot of things that I feel myself for me to like, so I won't reiterate that. But. Um, I will say what I really loved, my favorite parts of the film was towards the end when 
certain um, things happen that we'll get into spoiler section and I really love the goofiness of it all. I guess my criticism of the film is that at the end I felt like the mom really like she didn't really apologize or she didn't really like I, d I don't think she really understood the message that her daughter was trying to convey to her. We can get into this in spoilers because I do have my own opinion on it and I think it worked for the story. But mm. I was going to say, but it, it was a realistic portrayal. It was a realistic portrayal. Yeah, because yeah. not everyone is going to be apologetic. No, well, and or, th or this is getting into spoilers. We should talk about this in spoilers, baby, because we're talking oh, about I'm the end the of the Oh, I'm the one getting into spoilers now? <laughs> yes, you are. Is there anything else you want to comment on before we get into spoilers? I mean, I love the like portrayal of, and the way it depicted things that were very adult that I really appreciated uh, and didn't expect from a Disney Pixar film, you know, that was like very, very nice and refreshing to see these kinds of things. Uh, talked about especially like the, you know growing up and hitting that age and a lot of stuff where it seems like you wouldn't expect that in a kids movie and this included those things I think that's really nice the excitement of seeing like artists or seeing shows reminds me of Lizzie McGuire days for myself mm -hmm. just the hysteria surrounding it all so <laughs> all right so spoilers um I first felt started to fall in love with this movie with our main character having sexual thoughts about um some individuals uh in like the 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 kid who works at the store or whatever and drawing them and i thought that was really like wow like, okay yeah she, so she's like drawing like art of her like being you know held by like like fant fantastical kind of stuff and but she feels shameful about it and then when her mom finds it it was like so shocking how like embarrassed like I felt for the character and how it was like it made me feel like this is something the person who wrote the script probably went through themselves like so specific and very like well, but also somehow like relatable where it's like uh, just seeing you're able to see like okay what kind of character uh May is and her what, what kind of character her mom is and their dynamic and how there is clearly something broken here and it's going to snap and it really kind of set into motion I think the the bigger thematic issues in the story. Well, which is that May starts to rebel, right? She yeah. doesn't, like, she's not going to just tell her mom anything anymore because when she tells her mom or talks to her mom, there's nothing but judgment. Mm -hmm. And therefore, she starts to hide things. And I think it's very relatable universally for a lot of people who, if you feel judged about something, you're not going to open up and just to feel judged more. And I think that's very relatable as a teenager. You have thoughts you have feelings you want to experience things and then you don't want to really um sully this image that your parents have of you which is just innocence right and then you don't want to be like hey i'm not innocent you know you don't want to always do that and i think May when <laughs> the mom went to the corner store where the guy worked that she had a crush on and then basically accused her of taking advantage of her daughter mm -hmm. in front of a bunch of people and having no awareness what that could do to the daughter because she's so like, my daughter doesn't need to be accepted by anyone but me. And then not really yeah. like asking, but just assuming the thoughts of her kids. Just assuming she's perfect. She'd never have these thoughts, you know. Yeah. Uh, unless someone like brainwashed her. And I think that. Exactly. Um, I mean, what I like about the whole panda thing, and like we, we haven't really talked about the whole, I mean, the whole movie is about her turning into a panda, but, and it's like, it could be like a one one-to-one -one metaphor like it's a red panda it's period you know and that's clearly talked about you know in the movie like that's a great metaphor for it but I think it's also a larger metaphor about just all these things of growing up of breaking from the past and while and you see later on like uh, uh, May's mom and her aunts and all the women in her family did you know went through strenuous a strenuous process to keep in the panda and not let it out and I think that's it almost says more about just like breaking from tradition, breaking from uh, the norms and being your own individual well, person. Well, I think especially as a woman, like you're you're growing up and then you feel like you're supposed to, you, you have different expectations than what you see boys having. And then you're supposed to suppress your inner thoughts. You're supposed to suppress your sexuality that you're mind is beginning to wonder about and have thoughts about and then you're supposed to be this perfect person that's supposed to represent purity in a cultural sense in a traditional sense and i think the idea of going against the panda really was metaphorical to you know suppressing those thoughts and just kind of like being like traditionalist right as i think a lot of women are expected to do like you're not you're not a sexual person you are 
innocent and you are supposed to just, you know, meet this one person and then just fall in love and then not do anything until then. And even when you do things with them, you're supposed to deny it kind of thing, right? Or be shy about it. Whereas when you're going through puberty, you're having a lot of changes and you're like just going against your experience, right? And then so I think like May, when she accepts her panda at the end, is like, no, I don't want to go your route. Now, I thought what was hilarious was the mom it's like, oh my God, she does not know how to control her panda. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. you need to suppress your panda, I guess. <laughs> like, I just thought it was interesting. Like, the mom has no control at all. Well, and I love how it also comes back. Like, it, it, it goes through every generation where it's like, the mom is like, gets mad at May. And then it's like, but when the grandmother shows up, it's like. The mom is like, like, oh, hide me somewhere. Darth Vader. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's hilarious. It's like a love. generational repetition of tradition, yeah. right? Yeah. And repetition of trauma basically and so and it's the lack of understanding or wanting to understand something because you just want to vicariously live your life through someone else and that idea of vicariously living your life through someone else it kind of gets passed on yeah and i think there's this sentiment of like really criticizing this idea of parents of like you gave them life so does that give you the right to control it and i think like with control i mean like you enforce your beliefs and dreams upon them rather than letting them decide what they want for themselves as people and career wise and i think that's really showed it with the mom because she really is like judging of um you know may's uh uh, friends and she really is judgmental for anything and that's why i love the scene when may goes to concert someone who's able to like control her panda side and it's not in it's not she's not endangering anyone else and the mom is the one who ends up going out of control (sighs) and you know that was great i mean that that and then may shakes her butt to the mom is like oh ah, you this makes you mad and the mom is like no Growing up, stay my little kid forever, you know? And so I thought that was really funny, the rebellious moments of, oh, oh, is this what you don't want to see? And then, but I also love the ending where, you know, Anne also didn't like it, where May and the mom, the mom never apologizes, which I don't like. Really, at least I don't recall her doing so, but May and her mom have an understanding like that we're going to just respect each other's boundaries. And that's and the, that's like work. the best kind of outcome you can get because I, I think that is like, of course, um, May's mom decides to keep in the panda as do all the other members of her, her family. But um, May decides, you know, she's going to let it out and, and coexist with it. And I think that is a very realistic thing where it's like the best that May's mom can do. And although I'm sure there are, it's not a universal thing, but it seems like most likely scenario of like, yeah, you're we're going on different paths. Mm -hmm. that's okay you know we can still respect one another and be happy and in fact um uh, may still does her panda stuff at the the temple and uh seems to be working for them and making a lot of money for them so um i thought it was a real criticism um because all the ones who are pandas were women in the way that like women kind of bestow this um, patriarchal expectation on other women and it's like not really the dad who's saying like to the you know to the daughter like hey you're not allowed to date you're not allowed to do this and this and this but it's really the the matriarchal figure in the family who are really just like you know this is the way you need to act this is the way you need to do and kind of like in charge of that Mm -hmm. throughout the family lineage well i think what's interesting is that like the panda is came as as a way to like protect and it's supposed to be like a blessing um and i think maybe the fact that the women are the ones cursed with the panda kind of shows more like that women are not allowed to let out this side of themselves and they're they have to suppress it whereas men it's like they aren't cursed with it because they don't have to they can be whatever you know they can go explore these sides of themselves in a way that maybe these women well we're also like to. you know as a person who has periods like i can say this like we're expected to hide those things right when i have bad cramps i can't call off work and call sick every single time because i'm judged for those things i'm like 
you're but you know at the same time like being able to give birth is a beautiful thing almost seems like a curse because you have to suppress that those emotions and hormones that come with it and you can't really just like in may is very lucky in the film in the sense that she has a very open friendship and open support system with other women um in a circle so they kind of like give her the maternal love that her Mm -hmm. mom doesn't give in when she starts to change Mm -hmm. also what i found that was interesting was that picture like so when may learns to control the panda she has she thinks about her friends not her mom even though she lies to her mom that she thought about her um but that never changes she continues to think about her friends this interesting because when i first watched it i thought like okay like the mom is going to be part of that vision that is going to contribute to her calmness or her being able to control the panda inside of her but she never does and it's kind of like going back to what i was saying like that message isn't about like acceptance as much as it's about like having boundaries and being like able to just honor those boundaries and accept the difference i guess do you have anything else you want to say about this movie nada all right then well thank you for watching and let us know what you thought of turning red and what else you want us to check out this time of year yeah let us know we'll talk to you soon talk to you soon bye